Hi, thanks for choosing Time Valley Motorhomes to buy a new motorhome. If you have any questions after watching your new handover video of your chieftain, please don't hesitate to contact us on 01207 272 treble 7 or email us at sales at timevalleymotorhomes.co.uk and we'll be delighted to answer any questions. We hope you enjoy. The back of the vehicle, you've got your reverse camera at the top. This cover lifts off with the main key that opens the door. You then have a nut and this all lifts off. Some bare wheels in there, should you ever need it. Ladder, so you set the key on the ladder. Key goes in here and then you push it up and the ladder falls down, giving you access to your roof. But your garage door there. So same key that opens the door, opens this lock. You've got your carpets and your awning, winding handle and rafter bar on there and some good storage with access into the vehicle. And I like that side which you just tap at the top of the light and that comes on there, LED light. And then the lock just turn and then put the key in, give it a turn and tap like so. The set loo, make sure the slide in the loo is closed like I said. It'll then come out, you've got handles so you can drag it round the side, take the cap off, press the button and tip it into your waste disposal point. Once you've tipped it out, put some more water in, give it a rinse, tip it out again. You can then use this as a measuring stick for liquid. If not, use the tablets, which are like dishwasher tablets. Put a pint of water back into the cassette and drop one straight down the loo and that will degrade into the liquid. Got your external barbecue points, so there'll be a, a bullfinch gas connector in there. Clips in, turn it on, and then get some orange gas pipe and two Jubilee clips. Clip it onto there, clip it onto your Kadak or your gas barbecue, and then you use the gas out of your gas bottle instead of carrying another one. This here must come off for if you're heating the water on gas or you're heating the van on gas, so when while camping, push down, peel it off and that just lets the fumes out, otherwise it will fail. You've got your two fridge vents here. So in the winter when winterizing, it's a good idea to put your fridge vent covers on so they just slip in, slip in there and then get a screwdriver and turn these clips on both and then they're both secure. So you can still use the fridge when they're on. Just protects the element. You've got your awning light and your awning, which I'll show you in a separate video. You've got your under, your long bench, benches there. And then to the side you have, you do have a 240 socket, so if you need power in your own in, you do. In here, to open this, there is a lever just at the back of the seat, so that just opens there. And then you can get two 13 gas bottles in there. Simply hand tighten, left hand thread, turn on at the bottle. We do advise you turning this off when traveling, but it does have a crash valve in. And tie your bottles in. And, that, and that's your gas locker. Fuel opens with the ignition key. And that's how you fill your fuel up. Tire pressures are on this lamp panel there. So that's your tire pressure, so 5.5 bar front and back, or 79.5. Engine batteries underneath the floor. And the tool kit, should you ever need to have a breakdown, need to be towed, tow and eye, jack and brace, screwdriver, all in there. Engine batteries underneath the floor, like I've just said. Bonnet release on the side of the door there, which opens the bonnet. You then have your secondary catch in the middle. So you've got your weight plate when it was a chassis cab. We play it when auto trail got it, so it's a seat uh, and as it's on an outdoor chassis, so it's five ton. If you were to put a tow bar on, you can tow a ton to six ton. Front and back axle weights, paint coat here. If you need to jump start the, the vehicle for any re reason, earth there, so that's your earth and point. And that there with you is your positive for your jump receiving or giving a jump start. You've got all your power, all your fluids, so you've got your brake fluid radiator fluid, your power steering fluid and your screen wash all there. So screen wash is probably the main one you want to want. Get, get that there and you've got your oil filler and dipstick below. Come round the other side of the vehicle. 
this locker here is a, what's called a wet locker. You've got your two leisure batteries in there. You've also got your main fuse for your batteries in here and your hookup. So your hookup points here. So pull the lever down and slide the hookup off like so. And the hookup, open the lever and push back on. And that is your van hooked up. You've got good storage there. You've got your wastewater, so your wastewater is here, so normally you drive over a grid and just let it out. Do leave this open when travelling because the motion of the van on the camber of the road will rock any loose water out, and that's what you want. You've also got your external shower, so should the pump be on, you can push it in, turn it, and you've got your water there. It'll do hot and cold, so it's great for bikes, dogs, kids, whatever you need it for. Further back to the vehicle, you've got your fresh water intake. So when putting fresh water in, hose pipe into here until it overflows or until you see the level inside the van. If you are traveling, tend to just travel with 20 liters of water. If that's if you're going to a site, if you're going while camping, you'll obviously have to take a full tank. It will be a bit more on these on the diesel. And below, this is just clipped up, so you can just pull it out and turn it. And this is your fresh water drain off. So when winterizing, those two taps must be open to let all the water outside the vehicle. And then you've got your garage to the other side, which I've already shown you. To operate your main 12 volt 240 system, 240 if you are hooked up, 12 volt if not, and if you're well camping. So this is your main um, control panel. So press the on button. That'll then send 240 or 12 volt if not hooked up around the vehicle. You've then got your light switch, so this is your master switch for all your lights around the vehicle, and then they are all individually switched. Same with your readers underneath here, they are individually switched as well. You've got your pump, so this surface is your taps, your toilet, and your external showers, and your interior shower. Um, do make sure when you've got the pump on, you have got water on board, Otherwise, you'll just burn out the pump. Below here, you've got the, the awning light. So this is the light outside the vehicle. So if you are sitting outside the vehicle on a nice night and it does get a little bit dark, you can put the awning light on. This is a dimmer switch, so this dims the lights. And this one here is the power transferer, which transfers the motorhome to using the engine battery if the leisure battery was to go flat. We don't advise you using this because if you do drain your engine battery, you'll not be able to start the vehicle um, and then you'll have to uh, get a jump start. And then this one, this is if it, this is the tank heaters. So this is the probes inside your tank, um, which will, if it was to go a cold night, split October time-ish onwards, or you are abroad and you it was a cold climate, put these on and It'll, not, it'll stop the water from freezing. You've then got your up down arrows. So that's your main home page. Got your time there. You can set your time, your date, your alarm. Then you've got all your levels. So this is your leisure battery, your amps that you are using, your leisure battery, your solar, what's coming in off the solar, and the amps. When hooked up, the solar panel will go to sleep as. The 240s bring in the bigger voltage. And then you do have your vehicle battery, your leisure battery, your fresh water reading. So you've got 50% fresh water and zero waste. This will go, this will start flashing when either one is empty or the waste is full. It does indicate there that you hooked up with a little wiggly line there. And then over this side, you have got your Truma Ultra Heat, so this is heating water on gas, as it's got the gas flame. And you have got your Ultra, ultra Heat, heating the van on 240. So to use your, your water on your Ultra Store, turn down to gas and then choose your temperature. So you've got 30 to 70, and then the little, you've got the green light there, and then the little O is off. Same with here, you've got your 1 to 9, which is your thermostat. 9 is about 30 degrees. 2000 is equivalent to 2 kilowatts. Off, just below, which is a little low. 
half a kilowatt and a kilowatt so normally in this country you just go straight up to two two thousand which is two kilowatts but if you are abroad or you are using bigger power you might have to turn it down slightly just to stop the vehicle from tripping coming down to beside the door you've got your little switch here which is a push push switch which does your step and you've also got your entrance light and uh, lock your door it is on central locking but if you just want to lock this door just press this little um thing in here little tab and then as soon as you open the door it releases in the top locker the overhead locker behind the driver's seat you have what is called your power supply unit and this does all your rcds and 12 volt fuses so you've got your 12 volt fuses and all listed here what they are you've also got a, a mimic of the control panel so on water pump lights and um, power transfer so you can use that here but we'll just use it at the control panel it's easier then you've got your so this is 240 mains 230 so you've got your charger so these need to be pushed in this means it charges the engine battery and um, when hooked up you've also got your water heater so if you've got no power on them that switch up there for your space heater uh, which is the heating on 240 and the green light wasn't on come here and see if that button's pressed in and you've got the same here for your water heater your water heater there's no switch for your water heater and um, it's a simply just press here um, and that's heating your water on 240 so if there wasn't an, any water in and this switch was on turn it off just so you don't fry the um the heater out in the in the tank and you've also got your rcd unit there this is your build number for when it was built at the auto trail factory so if you need any parts at all give this give us this number or give anyone else this number and they'll know when the vehicle's built to what spec and what part goes on your vehicle in the cupboard next to your mains power unit you've got your tv booster so you can move this here and this will boost or bring down the signal of your telly and um, so you get the best picture that's there and then the cupboard next to it you've got your tv aerial so if you loosen the nut pull the aerial in when traveling make sure it's in stop the wind catching the aerial and then what you can do if you can't get a picture like that and you struggle push the aerial up and you've got the little toggle at the bottom which turns the aerial round on the roof and it'll get you the best picture i can you've also got your um supply your main supply for your microwave so if that needed to come out or needed to be changed it's just a plug in here the tv tv simply works i right, turn it on it's tuned there to us but once you do move side just press menu channel and then do a, a dtv which is digital TV auto tune. So you do an auto tune on the telly there. And that'll find as many channels as I can in your area. We do advise that when you travel, you simply lift this off. So this don't need to do anything, but just pull it up and it'll slide out the bracket there. Just so that the telly doesn't come that come off the bracket when you harsh break or anything. So store that away when you do travel. All the time to operate your fridge and freezer compartment press the on button here to the left hand side and then the fridge will fridge and freezer will start up you then can press the right hand side of the button which is mode and at the minute this is on automatic So your automatic selection, so this will choose gas, 240 or 12 volt if you start the engine. So if your gas, if you are hooked up and you take the hook about and your gas was automatically switched on, it would change over to gas. If you are then to start the engine, it would then go to the 12 volt setting. Or you can override, so you can go to 12 volts. So this is more for when you are traveling with the engine running. The alternate, I'll send a feed to the fridge and freezer and keep it at the temperature it was at already. So if you are lucky enough to get, keep this at home or have storage with electric, do 
pre-cool your fridge and freezer the night before bef and then put your shopping in get it all nice and to temperature nice and cold and then when you do hit the road you can travel for as long as you want and it shouldn't decrease it'll not increase in temperature but it shouldn't drop in temperature and then if you press mode again obviously it's got the gas which self ignites so you don't need to ignite put on gas just make sure it is the gas is switched on or this button will go red which means it's failed and you can hear it there clicking or you've got 230 volts which is electric so if you are on hook up and you are on a site don't waste your gas just put on a 230 and that'll do your mains power for your fridge freezer here you've got your temperature which is shown by the little green dots so it gets cold as it goes up and this here turns this on and this is just a setting which stops the rubber of the door freezing to the freezer box when it's on and if you are storing the van Clean the fridge out before you put it away for storage at the end of the year or you're not using it for a couple of months and pull these out on both fridge and freezer and what that does is it stops the door from closing and it allows a bit of air into the fridge and stops mould and all the bacteria growing. Below your fridge this is your winter drain tap for your boiler it's very important so when winterizing the vehicle the the boiler on the van stores 10 litres of water at any one time. You do not want that 10 litres of water to freeze when it gets cold. So when you stop using the van or you are using the van but only for weekends from October onwards, when it goes cold and frosty, I would advise that you let all the water out of the vehicle. Otherwise, it will freeze in the boiler and it's quite expensive to repair or replace and it isn't covered under war uh, warranty. So lift this up. And it'll drain all the 10 litres of water directly underneath the chassis. C come in, do it with no power on, don't turn the pump on because what the pump's going to do is it's going to try and push the water back into the boiler. And then once that's up, open all your taps into the mixer taps in the middle position. Take your shower head off and hose and lie that down because any water in the, the U bend of the pipe will freeze as well. And that just means that all of the water is out the vehicle. And same with the fresh, which I'll show you outside on a, on a separate clip. Open the fresh and the waste to make sure everything is completely water free in the van. And then that is you winterized for the winter. To operate your fire. So this is your ultra heat. So this is heating. So you, you've got your electric side you're heating there which will then either convect out the front of the fire or through the ductings but i'll show you how to do that so this side one to five is your fan so this is your 12 volt assisted fan which blows the heat round if you're wild camping you don't really want to use that because it does use your battery if you're on site you've got no problem using that so if you, if you didn't have it on, it would just convect out the front. It would still heat the van very well. If you are on site and you want it into the, the bathroom area, the kitchen, the front lounge, simply you've got two buttons. You've got A and you've got manual. So manual, it'll blow the heat round the ductings until continuously. It'll not stop. So once the van hits 30 degrees or whatever, 15 degrees, it'll keep blowing. But on automatic, once it hits the temperature, it'll kick out, stop. And once it drops, the thermostat will pick up, it's dropped and it'll kick back in. And that's your fan aside. This side here is your gas. So if you are wild camping, you don't have electric. Simply push down. You hear a tick. You'll see in there. And it will light. To operate your oven, you've got three gas, one electric hot plate. So if you are on a campsite and you are lucky enough to have hook up, use that instead of using your gas. But it's entirely up to yourselves. This, there you are, there's one of your rings away.
Ну да вам. And there's all three of you there. So that's all three gas rings. This here with the red light is your hot plate indicates it's on. Once you've used this, let it cool down before you put the glass lid down because these can shatter. And then you do have your oven. And if you turn it the other way, You may have to hold this one in until the thermostat gets a little bit warm before you release it otherwise it might just go out like so there it's away underneath you've got your main plug for your hot plate on the top of your hob there so if you ever have any problems with that you can isolate it there got storage Storage in there, above, cups, plates, and some storage. To operate your toilet, make sure the pump's on, on the main switch panel. Press the button, that'll flush it. That'll flush the toilet, and then you've got a main slide here, which lets the water and the waste into the cassette below. If this is open and you try to get the cassette out it won't come out this must be closed like so to get the cassette out the cassette diagram here the wheel will go red once the cassette is full that means you've got to go to the chemical waste disposal point and empty your cassette blue got some storage there window with a black blind a fly screen and that just opens like a normal window turn this to lock the window out Put your main switch here for your light above you put your skylight so push the button in pull the bar put all the way or you can put it in the grooves if it's a nice day and you just want a breeze through the bathroom blind and blackout but do make sure this is shut when you're traveling all of the cassette all of the windows and flat and skylights must be closed when traveling otherwise they may get damaged to assemble the bed above the looting area, simply pull this board out, it's on runners, push the mattress back and flip the mattress over. There you have your double bed. That bar. Goes into this fabric here, through the fabric and clips up here. So if you have young children up there who tend to roll around in the sleep, it stops them falling out. And then you do have the ladder which clips on there and there is your double bed in the looting area to assemble your front down double bed pull both sides out to meet in the middle and put the backrests into place across the van made the best bet is to turn them upside down so you get the, the flatter side of the cushion so you can put your sheets and your duvets on and that's how you make your lounge into a bed here in the cab you've got on your driver's door you've got your electric windows this locks the windows that is your adjustments for your mirror so you've got your top mirror and your blind spot so one two driver side passenger side you've got your controls here which lowers and dips your headlights you've got your parrot system hands free as well you've got your blinds so just pinch them slide them along 
feed them around the back of the mirror, the mirror and they are just magnetic. So if it is windy, a good tip is to put elastic band or bobble around the handles to stop them pinging open in the night. And you've also got the same on there. So always slide the bottoms forward. And obviously don't use these while driving because it's illegal. Wipers with the trip computer on this side. So it'll show you miles per gallon, your um, instant miles per gallon, your traveling times and so forth, which is all explained in your, your handbooks. You've got your lighting indicators. You've got your center lock in here. So this opens the van, locks, and also locks the habitation. So on and edge, just hit that button and you're locked in. Hazards, fog lights, heated mirrors on this. And then you've got two 12 volts, one being the bigger output. Temperature, fan speed, distribution, circulation, aircon. And then on here is your head unit. So to power this on, press the button. And then this powers on like so. So auto trail, you've then got your radio, so you can press tune it in and press one to six to save. SRC goes to another source. So you've got your, which doesn't work, because that's when it was. Auxiliary, auxiliary two, radio. There's a CD player, so if you press this button here, your CD is underneath. And for an aux input, it's a micro, micro USB. And then you do, of course, have your reverse camera when in reverse.